Like that. Yeah, so like a blob would fall over. I don't know. People are gonna actually crooked here. No, it was crooked the other way. No, it leaned. We're we're having a little bit of a tech. <laughs> See, it's leaning now down that way. We're we're I, crooked. I rather that than the phone fall off. But I, I think people would rather see us straight. The phone's not going to fall off. I'm straight, John. It's got some rubber on it. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Hello, hello. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Dad's Drinking Bourbon Live. Hey, Monty. Um, it is Sunday night. It is 930 Central. Our kids are in bed. So you know what it's time for. First of all, before we get started, though, I think... Everybody needs to give a shout out, um, or at least the two of us do, to the Nashville Predators that have made it to the Western Conference Finals for the first time ever. So if you have not had a chance to watch playoff hockey this year, it's been pretty good. I know when I when I uh, left here, it was uh, like 7-1 Edmonton was up on Anaheim. So that's going to be pretty good to see who... Uh, who ends up playing the Preds, but it's a, I know beer, bourbon and barbecue is a, he's from, he's from St. Louis. So he's a little bummed, but <laughs> the Preds, it's the first time they've made it. I, I am, uh, you know, busting out my Jersey tonight. We got the hat. So we got that over with. Oh, I almost broke some glass at the same time, <laughs> but, um, there's a bunch of you on here and I am doing a terrible job at saying hi to everyone. Um, but, Thank you, everybody, who's been joining so far. Um, this is the second installment of our Bottled and Bond Challenge. So, Zeke, you want to tell everybody what we got here? Yeah, first up, we got the Old Fitz Bottled and Bond. Next, oh, we got someone from Australia. We have Very Old Barton Bottled and Bond, bottled and bond Six-Year Age Statement. And last but not least... Old granddad bottled in bond as well. So we'll we'll talk about each one of these. We will talk about uh, a lot of different stuff when it comes for this. But what we're doing, if you haven't been following along, is every night there are a lot of bottled in bonds. So for a few Sunday nights, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put three up against each other. Each one of those nights, one of them is gonna win. So one of them will win out of these three that we have here. Germany. Oh, hey, we have we have nice. someone from Germany on. Thank you for joining. What time is it over yeah. there? Um, but one of these three is going to win, and it will go on. Last week, we had uh, Evan Williams bottled in bond. We had Heaven Hill bottled in bond. And we had Old Bardstown bottled in bond. And it just so happened that Old ba Bardstown bottled in bond won. Which neither one of us, I don't think, actually anticipated. Um, I, I thought it was going to be um, Heaven Hill. Yeah, and, uh, and I purposely pushed myself to try and enjoy the other ones more, just knowing that I'm a Willet fan and didn't want to be uh, unbiased in any way. So, Bourbon Spartan is saying that Very Old Barton is a dark horse, don't count out, it's solid, is what he said. And I'm saying that because when people do watch this after the fact, uh, you won't be able to see the comments. Now, that is interesting because we'll talk about this more, but Very Old Barton is the only age-stated bottled and bond out of this whole group. So I'm not going to rehash it for everyone, but you know uh, what it means to be bottled and bond. If you don't, visit dadsdrinkybourbon.com. We talk about it in the first post on this challenge. But, you know, Bottle and Bond has to be at least four years. So we know the ones that are on here are at least four years. Very old Barton out of this group is the only one that flat out says we're six years. So. And I have seen other comments too. So I, I feel like last week in Heaven Hill was almost the consensus. Everybody chimed in of we think that's going to be your winner. And this time seeing various folks across the board, uh, I think we'll have a much better and more intriguing mix. Yeah, and, and these are still, we're still in the same price point. We haven't moved up. Um, so, single malt slacker, we did, we covered Evan Williams last week. So, uh, if you are a little bit um, behind on this, we're doing three every week because uh, there's a lot of different bottled and bonds here. And then the winners of every week will end up uh, going off against each other in the finals. So, almost kind of like hockey. 
that we're not in the you know we're not in the Western yeah. Conference Finals yet. Um, oh, no worries. But we uh, were these are still kind of the semifinals and, and getting up to to eventually the finals. And these were just assembled. Randomly, there is no rhyme or reason behind any of the the three that are chosen to drink. And except for these, I picked them all for tonight because they say old. Because huh. all of these are old. Oh, bourbon sippers on. Welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining. Um, if you haven't checked her out, she is awesome. But she's off. She is off slinging drinks at Jep the Creed right now. So make sure you go see her and get a tour from her. And go say hi because she loves to show people around, loves to talk bourbon, and she's just a great person. Um, so these I actually kind of picked. I did have a rhyme or reason for these because I picked the ones that that said old. So this is old Fitzgerald, very old Barton, and old granddad. Um, so we we went with a little bit of a it oh. it just kind of happened. It was. You see how much we, we sometimes discuss these things going in. Well, it was organic. And and my wife has been sick this weekend, so Zeke texted me what time? About one or two o'clock. Yeah. He's like he's like, You gotta post what, what we're drinking tonight yet? And uh so we knew we were doing bottled and bond. I just needed to kinda of get together my collection and figure out which ones we're doing. But we're we're spending too much time setting this up. So let's drink one. Let's go for it. And which one you want to go with first? Shorty. Short. You want to go the the age stated first? Sure. So there. While we're kind of talking about this, and that's a great. Um, what is it? They're all hundred. Oh, nip of nip of courage. Sorry, it took took me a second to go ahead and uh, and read this, but they're all a hundred proof, all fifty percent alcohol by volume. And a, a, a random, totally different question. But while folks are uh, paying attention, and John's doing some pouring, I don't know if anyone read the the post that went up earlier in the week or last week rather on the the single barrel out of Rhode Island. Um, and my question to him, which neither one of us can figure out, is how a single ingredient pure corn whiskey, which it was. To me, tasted almost identical to Stranahan's, which is malted barley, single ingredient. Um, it didn't make any sense to us. Sorry if that's an, an, an ignorant issue, but if someone could enlighten us how those two are similar, I would love to hear it. Well, I didn't taste it yet, so I, I don't know. It's Stranahan's, trust me. Oh, I got to I gotta taste it. Um, so right now, we have very old Barton, six year. Um, Now is when we pause and have dead air because we're sniffing. Dead air. That's why I threw the question out. Let's try and get some response to doing this. I'll, I'll talk. You sniff. We'll switch off. So Zeke is sniffing. <laughs> I can't wait till he starts chewing on it, too, because that's going to be... Yeah, you've um, you got a lot to talk about. You know, I'm, I'm the slow one here. Yeah. So that's why everybody last week was like, Zeke's talking a lot, but that's because... Uh, And Alicia is saying malted grain doesn't always come through on the taste. Oh, you you just dove right in. So I'll wait to do my stuff until you uh, <laughs> until you're finished. So I'll I'll I will talk a little bit about um, very old Barton while Zeke is doing this, but it is seventy five percent corn, fifteen percent rye, and ten percent malted barley. So when you think about this one, this one is probably going to be the most rounded out of the three that we're ta uh, tasting tonight because Old Fitz is 75% corn, 20% wheat, and 5% barley. So there's no rye in the Old Fitz. It's a wheater. And then you have um, Old Granddad, which is a high rye, as most people know. It's 63% corn, 27% rye, and 10% malted barley. So when you think about the way that we're kind of starting off, we're, we're going with the middle ground first, and we have the two that are kind of high-low in each area that, that we're doing next. All right, jump in. That's, um, I, I will say my first sip, literally just the impression was the, the balance. You notice the, all three ingredients well, and they're, they're all at a good level. There's some warmth, uh, a little rye, a little sweet. It is a balance. Um, yeah, Monty, that, that was my thinking was it must just be the, the barrels, um, but even those were pretty different because 
the Stranahan's, as far as I know, the yellow label is a blend of uh, anywhere from I think six to 12 year barrels. And this was a, I think it said a 10 gallon barrel, real small. The yield was only um, 60 bottles for, you know, a, 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 I think it was 26 months old. So I can't imagine there was much loss out of that. Um, but yeah, interesting taste. So, oh, John, it's that word I can't say, I think. What? Daggio. No, he said daddio. Oh. <laughs> oh, did you think he said Diageo? I think so. Oh, thank you for loving the shade, Ted, by the way. Um, interesting thing also about these, right, is very old Barton's 14 bucks. Um, old Fitz is 15 bucks. And old granddad is 21 bucks. So we're still in the same ballpark price-wise. We haven't moved up in this contest to uh, getting to the, the more expensive ones like the E.H. Taylors, the, the Old Forester, the McKenna's. And even the McKenna is 30 bucks. So we haven't moved up in, in uh, price class yet. But these are still some, some good ones for... Um, you know, 20 and under, essentially, that are that are really good. Um, your tasting notes, you jumped around on me, got a little ADD talking about your your Stranahan's-like single I was barrel. just confused. I want to make sure I said something about it before I forgot. Um, on this, I get a lot of heat front to back, um, even coming down the pipe some. Um, I caught some sweetness the first time. Second time around, seemed to be more licorice on the back end, maybe some... Some, something along those lines toward the very back of the taste in the palate. So I get a high heat in the in the front of my mouth. So that's why I'm calling it a high heat. It's not a low heat. It's not the Kentucky hug. Yeah. I didn't get a Kentucky hug at all for this, but I definitely got that rye heat that's going to, you know, kind of tingle and singe your lips and, and mouth. Um, Now I'm writing. You're not supposed to sip and chew right now while I'm writing. You're supposed to fill in the blanks for me. Um, well, did you pick up any of that in the back end? So the back end is dry. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's very not, dry not the back, the back end. Some, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking licorice. I could be wrong, but something in that that range of a taste. But it's it's like it it's after you have it, your your tongue is very dry. Yeah, well, I still have a mild. I mean, I wouldn't call it a burn, but there's a there's a tingle still in the back I and mean, the whole way through. But that ride jumps off of it real quick. I mean, you know it's there. Yeah, it's a very quick. It's quick um, with the heat, and then we have. Um, it's almost like you you have it. Yeah, Alicia, that's a a good one. It's prickly. It's like it, it kind of just comes in, it prickles your mouth, and then it, it goes away. Um, I do get a little bit of vanilla and caramel, but they're there. They're very they're on the nose, but they're very faint. Um, yeah, like they're there on the front of the tongue, but once it goes down and that back end hits it, it totally just overbearings. It makes it disappear. I mean, for like a brief flash, it's almost like you have a Horthers in there or something, but as soon as it goes down, uh, yeah, Monty, I, I think it's the anise, that type of taste to me, um, like the, it just totally eradicates what, what, what was there or what you're, you're feeling. So the way I would describe this one is like, say you have a field of corn and you, you go ahead and you sip it and then all of a sudden this rye is coming behind it you have this rye storm and it basically singes all of the crops that you had and after you're just kind of left and I'm not saying that's a bad thing I mean it's still an interesting experience but after you're just kind of left with that Singy, smoky. I like your story. You're finally playing into my old factory type description. Yeah, I'm so. giving you. I'm giving you a story. I know Zeke likes a good story. I just like all the what appeals to all factory senses, and somebody closes their eyes and they can taste or feel the same thing we do. Yeah. Um. So what about you guys? Have you have you had very now? I mean, finding. It's also important to mention when you find the very old Barton six-year bottle and bond, it is a white label. 
Uh, you could go to the store right now and probably find a very old Barton for 10 to $15 and it's going to be a black label and that is not the, the, the six year bottled and bond. Um, it is a little bit harder to find this white label. Uh, it's very prevalent in Kentucky. I don't have any of it. I, I have not found one in Nashville. Um, but I, I do, um, I do very much like it. I do still like this one a lot. I think you'd be a good mixer, and I'm not normally a cocktail or mixer person, um, but I could see that going into something that could mask the warmth a little bit, but also, depending on your ratio, leave enough of it to where you just got mild hints of it. Um, I think it, in that regard, it would be very uh, beneficial. Plus, with the cost, you're not going to feel bad if you're pouring out a few bottles in an evening. Well, our, our resident expert here says it, it uh, holds up good and old-fashioned. So I could believe that. I, I could definitely believe that as well. Um, tell, tell the people something else while I finish this. Uh, something else. What do I think of the Derby? How'd that work out? Uh, anybody hit it big? Um, I think it was it the Derby? Well, I'm always dream. dreaming. Yeah. I'm always dreaming of hitting it big. And uh, I don't always. <laughs> Story amazing. Joke. Uh, I hope that wasn't the bulk of your content for the night. No. <laughs> I'm here with dad jokes all day, everyone. Um, no, I was super pumped. My friend, my friend covered the Derby for the first time. Um, and, and for those of you that don't know, I mean, I don't want this to come across like I'm bragging or anything, but I actually used to cover the Derby with the Horse Racing Radio Network. And my friend had a, a press pass for the first time ever. And he said, um, he was trying to ask me advice. And I said, listen, my best advice to you is don't mess with the press box. When the race comes along, go to the roof of Churchill Downs. And I, I said, don't even mess with anybody in there. People, people get all upset, by the way, on Derby Day if you're in the media. And if you're on a balcony and you're standing on a balcony and you have the view of the race and you're not supposed to, people get really upset if you're standing like in their designated area. Um, so I said, don't even mess with it. Go up to the roof. And he said he watched it on the seventh floor roof with about 20 cops. And he said it was amazing. And I said, that's my best. I mean, it's the best place to watch the Derby ever is the roof. That's and if you ever have uh, the chance to get up on the roof on Derby Day, you don't have any crowd around you. You have a perfect view of the whole track. And it is like the greatest experience ever. Um, Bourbon Spartan, I, I, I feel your pain on the, the raffle loss. Um, it happens. Uh, luckily, I, I'm not a, an ETL fan, so uh, you, usually the person getting that feels much better about getting it than I do losing it. Um, and uh, thanks to Mike for hosting. He's a, he's a hell of a guy. But I actually, so last night I, I tried um, Peg Leg Porker 12 year. That's what I drank yesterday. It is really, really good. It's smoky, and I'll, I'll, there'll be a review of this on dadsdrinkingbourbon.com this week. It's smoky, but it's, um, hey, Joe Bourbon's on. Um, it's smoky, but like not smoky in the sense that you would think smoky. It's smoky like somebody took like barbecue smoke. Well, he's a barbecue man. He is a barbecue man. I don't know how he got it in the bottle. But it's like the taste I had with it was like I had smoky barbecue ribs while I had this amazing 12-year-old bourbon. Mm. Um, now, Peg Leg Porker is, is a barbecue joint in Nashville. They source their, um, their bourbon. I'm still trying to figure out where it was. I'm thinking it has to be Dickel because it's a Tennessee whiskey, and I think that's the only, um, the only stuff I can find. Very filtered. That, Oh, Joe Bourbon says it's hickory filtered. I was going to say, uh, say either a filtering or some kind of additive, maybe. But I'll, I'll do a, an official peg leg review this week. But I had, I had um, Irish War Cry. I had, um, I had Irish War Cry, could always dreaming, and then Thunder Snow. I and had... Thunder Snow did not make the trip from Dubai very well. 
Yeah, um, that Thunder Snow as well. Didn't he like, give up halfway or something? Yeah. Like, say, fuck this he shit, Spider-Man's not, out of here. Well, oh, well, now you're dropping F-bombs. But <laughs> he, um, he, he did not enjoy it. And he, he came out... Now, everybody... If you actually watch horse racing, everybody came out and they were... It were was very well behaved for the paddock. Um, you know, everybody in the paddock was well behaved. You didn't even see horses jumping a hair at all. No horses were really washed out. They all looked really, really good, especially the ones that you, you expect to be a little bit uh, more hot tempered were pretty calm. And then Thundersnow came out and obviously did not travel over from Dubai well, didn't really want to run. Um, and, you know, one that I'm really, I, I normally don't bet, I bet more off of pedigrees and jockeys. And if you know the good jockeys, they're not going to waste, you know, a good jockey on, a, on an okay horse. Um, you know, John Velas, the, the connections of, of Always Dreaming, not to get on a horse racing tan, tangent, but the connections of John Velasquez um, as the, the jockey and Todd Pletcher as the trainer, you know they're always going to be solid, but, um, but... I uh, I normally do jockeys and pedigree, but I should have bet McCracken just because of the movie Kingpin, and I completely forgot to. But you, you you had more knowledge just then than I, I ever will on horse racing. That that insight was sorry. I don't I don't have anything I can add there. If anybody you, needs you some help with out. the track, I I got gotcha. you. It was a <laughs> sloppy track, which meant I would have gone for an AP Indy. Um, so anything that that could trace its way back to AP and D, I would have been all over. But anyways, I digress. No more derby talk. So we're, <laughs> we're now on Old Grandad. Old Grandad Bottle and Bond. This is a Jim Beam product. I should mention Very Old Barton is 1792 Barton, um, which is owned by Sazerac, which is, you know, another important thing to know. Um, Old Grandad is, is owned by Beam Suntory. Uh, you know, so we, we know that there's if we're if we're doing horse racing talk again, there's some Japanese connections in there. Uh, this is a twenty dollar bottle, sixty three percent corn, twenty seven percent rye, ten percent malted barley, and it is fifty percent alcohol by volume, a hundred proof. So, and it is uh, the high rye is noted on the label, um, and is it is, is. is is noted in the the initial taste as well. I would say the. Um, I mean, the first thing it says underneath Old Granddad is High Rye Nashville. Uh, I, I felt it come, uh, just come right up on the first sip. The, um, the other interesting thing that most of you already know, Old Granddad is, of course, Basil Hayden. Um, so, fun, fun fact. I'm good with fun facts, too. <laughs> is that right? I, I can tell it pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, like mid palate, just uh, my whole nose opened up, almost like having some big, <coughs> some, like having big salad in your upper lip or something. But the interesting thing about this one is where the very old Barton hit really the front of my mouth. This is more the back of my mouth, just starting to get to my throat. Um, is that where it's hitting you? Um. Yes and no, like um, the I get the back sensation, but it doesn't go down; it goes up. No, no, like, no. Literally, it opens yeah. it opens up my nares from the back end. Like, like literally, I feel like I have big salve under my nose or something. Um, real thin mouthfeel though; like it doesn't work up at all. I agree with that. Real thin, like I, I mean, just paper. I mean, it's not it's not a super. Um, not hardly any complexity to it. I mean, it's just. Yeah, that, that that thinness. I don't know. That, that was the first thing I thought of. The whole the whole drink through was just the thinness and literally you just get kind of that warmth that shoots up on the back end, um, but it didn't even go down as far as being a, a, a heat and that kind of oof, got something in that one. Uh, it was just more of a wow, sounds clear right there. So it's not a. It, it's very 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 high. I mean, I'm not getting a lot of taste on this one besides heat. Um, I don't know if I'd call it heat because it's not a it's not an alcohol burn. It's just that the rye and what it's going to do. I mean, it's, yeah. not, it's not like heat in the sense of like a Stag Junior or a Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, where you you know that. No, but that's a cast strength heat. This is just a rye heat. Um, heat is on. 
You think he's saying you think he's saying heat, but he's saying Heath. I got dad jokes all day. Um Yeah, I'm I'm just not getting a lot of taste. I mean, it's not like that. It's not as dry as the old Barton is on the finish. Um, but it very much is, uh, I mean, it's got some of the same sweet that the old Barton did on that front end of the palate. Um, but the high ride just totally negates it, but in a different way than the old Barton wiped it out. Yeah. Like both of them on the back end, it, you, you lost any sweet butterscotch caramel, however you want to describe that. The, that group of taste, um, both these, the, the back end just totally negates it, but in, in opposite directions almost to me. Like this one goes up, whereas the old Barton kind of hung around just right at the back of the tongue. It was just kind of um, the prickly word. Yeah, perfect. Um, yes, definitely go Preds. Go Preds. Heath, you, you missed all my derby talk. I'll have to talk to you about it later sometime. Um, but... Yeah, we had a, we definitely, we, we meandered into derby talk for a little bit. It's okay. Don't be sorry. We're just happy you're here. And Paul is here. So thank you for joining. My wife tries whiskey is here. Our friend's just a little bit south of us. Um, Keith was busy doing man pours. If you have ever seen, I know I say this every week, but if you have ever seen Heath's man pours, he puts us all to shame. Um, he travels up. I mean, I'm stealing yours because it's pretty much. I feel the exact, <laughs> yeah. exactly the same. Um, I just I don't get a lot of taste from the old granddad. Um, and so I actually didn't hear anything. We were reading the comment there, but um, this actually says so. It says six crafted. Now, oh. if you go to very old Barton, they will say, or if you go to uh, 1792 Barton, they will say it's age stated as six years. That is something that I will definitely look up. And I love it when you guys make us look dumb because that is what we all are about. It's keeping each other in check. Um, but it has always kind of been, um, my understanding, it was always an age statement. Could be like the um, you know the triple A. Oh. Originally it was you know ten year, and then there's the ten star as well. Yeah, we're getting we're getting schooled right now, so we always love it when you guys take us to school. Well, so that throws any uh, extra points it got for an age statement out the window. Yeah, look at that. Well, go. It used to be, but we know it's at least four. I mean that that is. So now we're moving to the, the old Fitzgerald. I, I I didn't really get much with the old granddad, though. I mean, but I would still... It's not... I, I still like the old granddad, especially for the price. You can't beat the price. Just so thin, I think. Like, I'm, I'm surprised how... Being the high rye, you get the rye portion. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't just work up to anything at all. Uh, let's go look at, uh, let's look at Old Fitzgerald here. So, Old Fitzgerald is owned by Heaven Hill. It's 75% corn, 20% wheat, 5% malted barley. Uh, it is a Heaven Hill product. It's 15 bucks. So, this is going to be on the other end of the spectrum. We just had a high rye. This is going to be a no rye, 20% uh, wheat. And 5% malted barley. So. And the back says, you're key to hospitality, so I'm going to assume it's meant to be shared, not one of the ones you uh, hoard for yourself. Well, I'm sharing it with you right now. Well, there you go. Cheers. So, what do we, what do we, cheers. And Will just joined. Hey, Will, how's it going? So, we have, uh, Zeke is chewing. You could always hear them swishing it around. They could see it too. I like the visual you give them. I moved that thing. Told you. Got more receptors on the tongue than anywhere. For those of you that that are kind of uh, interested, I was really uh, surprised this weekend. 
I went to a, a liquor store here in Nashville and somebody were, was wearing a podcast t-shirt and I was very excited and let Will and the Grease know that I saw people wearing a podcast t-shirt out. Heath, they don't have the sweatshirt like you, but um, but yeah, it was super exciting to see somebody uh, wearing some of their swag. So what are, you, what are you getting with this one? I didn't get much first pull, you? I actually did. What'd you I, get? I, I got I got a flavor um I kinda got a flavor bomb that I did not get with the other ones. I mean there's no I burn. I expected that, but I haven't I haven't seen it show up yet. There's no burn. Hey Renee, thanks for joining. I'm getting fruit on this one. It's like, um, I mean, I'm definitely getting the, uh, getting some fruit and vanilla, a hint of caramel. <laughs> yeah, no, it comes through on the back end. Um, no so, burn. Well, I get, I get heat. You get some heat? I got some burn in there. Um, that's why internally I was trying to think, all right, what's causing this burn? But as, as the chew progressed, flavors came out, but then once it moved to the back of the palate, uh, some burn. You kind of, you kind of are, uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the third sip of this one, uh, holds here in a minute. I'll, I'll let you go ahead and get a, get a third one if you need to. So for those of you, I mean, as we're going through, we are on the <clears> third one right now. Have you guys had these? What do you What do you think? Has anybody ever had all of these? Because for for tonight, I don't think Zeke. Have you had any of these before I've tonight? I've had none of these. Um, I've only had OGD and the one fourteen. Um, I don't think I've ever had any any of the old Bartons or Fitz. Um, but again, for anyone that missed early on, um, it definitely seemed like more people had various favorites coming into this than last week uh, when everyone was you know, just heavy heaven hill um, is what they thought would be the winner. We actually have a poll on Twitter. Uh, so if, if you go to our Twitter page, and it's a little messed up, it's Dad D-R-N-K-N Bourbon because we can't fit Dad's Drinking Bourbon on our, our Twitter page. But you can get to our Twitter page by going to dadsdrinkingbourbon.com. If you go to our Twitter page, we actually have a poll up as to uh, what's your favorite out of these. Um, I, I think, so, let's start before we even, I know you're still sipping and, and, and swishing this one around a little bit, but if we were to have, you know, the old granddad versus the very old Barton, do you have a winner in that one? I'd go Barton. I I would agree with you. So the, now, the Granddad, just I don't, I don't see much. It's hard to say. I don't think benefits the right word. That's what's coming to mind. But I just don't see a a place to really use that in the bar, other than somebody comes over you're not a fan of and you just need to pour them something. But there's worse things. So you pour too. something for people that you're not a fan of. And yeah, yeah, pour something for everybody. But like you wouldn't want to win that person over and give them something better, or just to stick it to them and say well, like, if you I'm know not a more? fan of them, I've already had a reason to judge them. They're not neutral. Oh. Somebody neutral, I'll give somebody something decent to good. I mean, you so know. what's your rating system on people that if you're saying they're not neutral, like are you saying like they're what's what are you can what have any reason other words? Somebody like, as a, do you have like drive reverse um, curmudgeon? Curmudgeon. Yeah, if someone's commoting, they're getting non-good stuff. Yeah, Heath, we agree. Now, now this one is the the big one though, and and it's funny that the two it came down to are both from Bardstown. Um, you know, so we have we have the very old Barton uh, from Bardstown, and we have old Fitzgerald from Bardstown and Heaven Hill. Um, so I, I think we could say that tonight. We haven't picked an official winner yet, but right now the winner is Bardstown, Kentucky. Um, That's where good stuff comes from. Good stuff. Yeah, Zeke is a, 
a big fan of the the distillery that overlooks Heaven Hill in Willow. And which the Heaven Hill had a, a big release this weekend. The uh, the William Heaven Hill 14 year. I saw uh, quite a few of those uh, popping up uh, as I was looking at my phone and not the, the race on TV or traveling between multiple friends locations and chasing my kid around who can chase a frisbee really well though really do you I, play I felt, fetch with your kid i felt bad literally because i was like in my head i'm thinking man somebody's gonna look at me and think this guy treats his kid like his dog but i'd throw it across the yard he'd bring it back i'd throw it again wore him out and it was a win-win so so what's the better half think about you playing fetch with your son i don't think it resonated in her mind of i'm playing fetch with him in, in my mind in her, i think in her mind it was He's got the kid occupied and he's doing something physical so he's going to be tired and sleep later. There's no complaints in that department. My daughter right now is still in the Wreck-It Ralph phase. So she'll go and she'll just find everything. Like she'll find a drawer and just throw everything, um, everything out of the drawer. She'll just kind of take it and like I just sit there and I go, I'm going to wreck it. And I throw, she throws it all out. Um, but she's cute. I, you know, you'll see her... You'll see her pop up on my uh, on my Instagram from time to time. So Heath likes the side conversations because <laughs> do you know what Heath's comment was? You probably missed it because you don't pay attention to our people. I've been trying to. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you weren't swishing so much, do you want me to taste this stuff? Or you want me to read? So Heath said NASA is a I big I fan. That. I didn't know what it meant. Well, it's a callback to last week. Do you not remember last week? Oh, yeah, I'm with you now. Sorry. It's a callback no, to last don't, week. Don't bring that up, John. Don't, don't he, bring it up. He wants to know your thoughts on NASA. <laughs> we'll have a private conversation on that. Uh, I'm just saying. That's all. Heath, I applaud you. Send a PM. I'll give you my, my cell if you want to have a, a long, drawn-out conversation, but... Uh, it'll need to be after I get home tonight and get a large pour and a cigar. And anybody who wants uh, Zeke's phone number, I will give it to you. <laughs> so just, you know, DM one of us and I'll get you his number or, or Zeke will get you his number. Um, I will throw out the warning of late at night, drinks, cigars. Um, if you're not from ro- rural Podunk, Georgia, you rural? may not understand what I end up saying. That I don't understand what he's saying half the time. Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a gift and a curse, but I can have conversations and people be in a room and nobody knows a word we said. It's, it's a good time. Well, the cocktail man may even just joined. So that's all we... Welcome. Thank um, you. And somebody did ask about Evan Williams' uh, bottled and bond again. We did do that last week. Yeah, mine um, told him. No, no, another comment. Oh. Mr. If you read the comments, you could interact with our people. I'm just saying. <laughs> Some people. I'm just saying. You're you're behind. Catch up. Hey, after NASA, I'm I'm spot on, man. You you hit the, yeah. you, you pinch the nerve. It gets me going. I know. Zeke just wants to go. Out. Do you want two minutes to talk about NASA? No, no, I, no. Um, for those of you that missed last week, Zeke doesn't believe we landed on the moon, and he also believes that NASA. I didn't is a say farce. nothing about the moon, really. I, I mean, I'm, I I could be sold on that one. I just it's the cost aspects. Well, Me and NASA are like you and short-term rentals. Well, no, but if you're talking about the cost, that's a completely different story. I mean, it's pretty expensive. But then you get into stuff like, uh, hey, have a good one. Um, you get into, uh, he does turn into boom hour. Uh, <laughs> and I say, we have propane. I, I can't do it. I'm I not do boom hour. No, I know. that, that That's uh, Hank. Mm-hmm. But I can do more family guy. I can't do as much King of the Hill. All right, so, so back to the booze. Where, where are you on this? I'm, I'm well, no, but I mean, let's I'm, talk I'm, about I'm for his for his benefit, real quick. You you have to be into SpaceX then, right? For what? SpaceX. No, it's the guy who owns Tesla, and he he's actually working on using reusable rockets and getting the, the cost down and things like that, that. that. That's fine if it's in a private investor's money. It is a private investor's money. He can do whatever money. he wants. It's just like somebody dropping five figures for a bottle of Old Rip 25. If they think it's worth it or something they want to invest in, go for it. I don't think the government should mandate my tax dollars into this nothingness. Sorry, it's not... Te- yeah, it's Elon Musk. Cocktail Maven knows what's going on. But he he's 
working on reusable stuff. That's fine. As a private investor, it's totally different. That's his money. He and and he's actually going to work on like I'm sure before you die, you will be able to go up into space no. as a tourist. I'm not. I pay money for that. Well, I mean, what if they get it down to like the cost of a Southwest want to get away? Like you want to get away and orbit the Earth? I want to go to space. I'll just lock myself in a room with that 2014 stag. I will be in a utopia. Okay. Well. Get down. Do you need another pour of these to, to make a... I, I want to hear your thoughts. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty torn, and then I, I guess I have my, my two rationales as to why, but I'll, I'll hear where you go. Um, I think when it gets down here, <laughs> yeah, we're not supposed... We are not supposed to know. And, and uh, Maven, we're not, we're, we're not poking the bear. We, we, we poked the bear a little bit, and we're not going to continue to poke the bear. I'm going to take another sip of the old Fitz, and I'm going to take another sip of the old Barton. Do you want any more? I mean, I'm not saying no. We, we know that one. I mean, I'm all, I am all for sharing $15 bottles with you. Yeah. How is it you get the 15s and I get the big ones? Yeah, but I had enough. I, I'm doing enough 15s that it adds <laughs> up to. Yeah, John gets $15 bottles. I, I land the 15 year pappy. Yeah, I remember this. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so you have to have some initial thoughts. I told you. I mean, I had a lot of fruit, vanilla, caramel. Not a lot of burn. It was very smooth. Um, heat is right. You know, a lot of plastic caps everywhere. We did throw out old WD gray forty. WD forty. The only thing that NASA's proven useful. We we did, and and tang or tab tang. Which one was it? Tang. There's a good song about that too. Old granddad is the only one that had a cork, but it was a plastic cork. So lots of plastic going on here. So, I do love Barton. I love a lot about that place. Um, in taking, you know, and letting it air out for a little bit, the Barton's a little more enjoyable. But I do love, um, I love them both. So, for different yeah, reasons. My, my, my um... What hangs me up on this is for the price, I don't think necessarily anybody would would intentionally buy this to drink neat. I do. It's a it's a bottled in bond. The the sophisticated well, bourbon drinker but, can find value in a fifteen dollar bottle. But to me, for the for at that price though, you're also looking at a mixer and let's say mixer since we've had a derby theme as a sidebar. Well, all right, you're going to want something that's going to make a good taste in a cocktail that you can serve to masses of people if you're hosting. So to me, if I'm going to have something that I want as the mixer, I go with the bar. But if I was going to have something neat, I think I would go with the fits. And that's why in my mind, I'm trying to project, all right, if I, if I bought this, what would I be thinking I would use it for and where would it be the most beneficial? Yeah. Zeke is a cheap date. No, it's not Bob and Tom. It's uh, Roger Allen Wade. Um, funny dude out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, look him up. Uh, he's got a song called Poon Tang, obviously, but Tang is referenced in there. Um, along with the smell of feet and some other stuff. You can you can figure out where it Zeke goes. Zeke just keeps wanting to say, say stuff that I can't post. Like <laughs> what? That's what the song's called. Look it up. I think, so, I think we have to measure this as, you know, we drink everything neat. I get that. You know? But a lot of people don't. I know a lot of people don't, but we drink things neat. So, if we're, you know, we can always put the caveat in that we're drinking it neat. Um, he th- <laughs> Chilling the most, the official Kid Rock trucker hat. It's not Patagonia. I'm not into that stuff. Oh, Jamie's on. Hey, Jamie. I didn't even see you on. Um, 
Squirrel, I love that. Anybody who hasn't seen the movie Up, um, I, I'm leaning old fits. I'm leaning old fits. I'm not, I love the Barton. I mean, the Barton has more of a, an oaky taste. If you do like oak and, and smoke more, yeah, I definitely go with the, I, I definitely go with the old Barton. If you like, and, um, and I like both. I mean, I, I very much, I could take both of these into the next round. I know we can't do that, so I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say old fits. I'm, I'm with you on that actually. Um, for the looking at the mash and the Barton having the the what on paper would be the the best diversity and easiest to as a crowd pleaser all around. Um, that back end just overbears all the sweet. Anything else you would you would want to enjoy out of it. So especially. Like I say, if you're going neat, I, I would definitely go with the fits. The the caveat of if you're doing mixed drinks, Barton, you, you're not going to find a better deal that's going to mix as a bourbon to give people the taste they would expect when they think of a bourbon cocktail. Well, so I know we finished, <clears throat> but so so Bourbon Maine is saying only dads have seen the movie Up, and uh, you haven't seen the movie Up, hmm. but I will tell you that I. <laughs> I really think when it comes to Pixar movies, it's not just dads. Like, I saw Up before I was a dad. My kid can't even sit through a commercial. So I'm not watching movies with her yet. I think Pixar but, stuff, I've only really seen Shrek and been compared to as an ogre. <laughs> what I've been compared to as an ogre. Look at me. Have you not seen me? I don't wear a shirt when I'm at home. What? Yeah. So, if, if anybody I'm is... Any of the girls that are on here, I never uh, said it was. Attra- I never said it was attractive, and neither do my neighbors. I, I just don't wear it. I know shirt well enough to know own. that nobody wants to see me with my shirt off, so I keep mine on. I never said it was attractive. I'm in my own home, I'm going to be comfortable. So, so are you full dad bod? Mm, oh, I, like dad bod? You got the little gut showing, and you it's a kangaroo pouch. Thank you, kangaroo pouch. Been there since age twelve. <laughs> well, so. On this one, I don't know what anybody else has left to say, but um, we put tonight, we put old granddad, very old Barton, and old Fitz together. I think, uh, yes, I once we get the podcast, um, once we eventually uh, get our act together and do a podcast, I, I'm fully expecting Zeke to do it without his shirt on, and I don't know if I really want that. I mean, technically, this is my my house. So, it is your uh, house. You can do whatever if, you want. If, if there's no video footage, I'm going to be comfortable. I, I, I I'm going to have to get behind that. It's not going to be naked, but uh, you know, I uh, but I think if we're looking at this, what we did tonight with old granddad bottle and bond, very old Barton bottle and bond. Now that we know it's no longer age stated, and we have old Fitzgerald bottle and bond, I'm going to have to go with the old Fitz. Then the very old Barton, then the old granddad. Yeah, Fitz is just the best all-around profile. Um, Barton on the front end offers a whole lot, but once it goes toward the back and down, it, it just overbears you with the... Uh, just, mm, no. And lots of people are going to be going to bed tonight dreaming of Zeke without his shirt on. But as always... We thank you very much for your time. Uh, we love that you spend Sunday nights with us. We know we're going to be doing this uh, this bottle and bond challenge. I can't say it. bottled and bond challenge for a few more weeks. Well, there, boom. Um, yeah, but uh, if there's something you want to see us do, reach out to us, Dad's Drinking Bourbon at gmail.com. You can go Instagram that you're already on, Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Uh, my Instagram is suburban underscore dad. Zeke won't give you his Instagram. You can find us on Facebook, backslash Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You can find us also um, on on Twitter. So go to our webpage, dadsdrinkingbourbon.com, and find the Twitter. Next week, uh, and I know uh, Tennessee Bourbon Guy was talking about it, let us know what you want to do next week. But I'm thinking it's going to be the Old Forester. It's going to be Old Forester, McKenna, and um, E.H. Taylor. I, we might go big big guns next week. 
I don't know what you guys think, but we might do that. Yeah, we've got some segues too. Uh, we both managed to bunker a few uh, nice little niche bottles over the past couple of weeks that um, I, I haven't seen much press or anyone really talking about. Um, and we, we need to get those out there too. So we'll uh, so we'll be getting those in. Uh, let us know if you keep liked uh, if you like the bottle and bond challenge. If you like what we're doing, let us know. We always like some feedback and. Plus, Zeke kind of needs to, to hear it uh, because he doesn't always trust me. So let us know if you <laughs> like what we're doing. Um, and thank you guys very much for your time. We will see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I get my Instagram.